Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakar Jackson. It is January 22nd, 2016, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, a question for Hillary. Last week it was reported on InfoWars.com that your email server was hacked and you knowingly continued to use your email server. Can you comment on that? Yeah, it's totally untrue. The question stems from an exclusive InfoWars interview earlier this month in which former Secret Service agent Dan Bongino reported that Hillary continued using her private email to discuss classified information while knowing that her server had been compromised. Not only was the email server hacked, but the Clintons knew it was hacked. And not only is she not currently indicted or in prison, she's running to be president of the United States. If this is not a red flag to every Paul Revere out there that something's wrong, then you know what? The country is lost. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Another conspiracy theory. Uh, let me, let me. <laughs> Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water, pairing the unprecedented super filtration power of an all-new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell. It removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants and hormones filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons stainless steel construction easy assembly low maintenance replacement filters are simple to install and now as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping this is a limited time offer so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off go to infowarsstore.com or call 888-253-3139 Ladies and gentlemen, first item of news tonight is incredibly important. So important, I've preempted the start of the show. Jakari Jackson and all the latest breaking news is coming up here in just about five minutes for the hour-long nightly news transmission. It is the 22nd day of January 2016 on this Friday edition. Again, I am your host, Alex Jones. We're also doing a live Facebook mentions right now. Uh, as we tape this for the news, show that this get, gets out now. This is so serious. As I got off the air at 2 o'clock Central earlier today, I was handed a Defense One article. I also saw it mentioned in Politico, and I went and actually read over the bill, and it is staggering. It is staggering. It is nothing less than military martial law, not just in America, but world wide as NATO, as a world government army. And it gets worse. They're convening a 29-nation meeting next month on the, quote, threat of ISIS. And really, that's the cover for NATO to operate in any country, anywhere they want. This is the global government army. This is so incredible. So I'm about to go over this for everybody and then go over some of the background. Now, Undoubtedly, just like with Jade Helm, the media will misconstrue or edit this to say that I'm saying they're coming for your guns th this week or next month, or that they're going to lock everybody up next month, or that this will be physical martial law like North Korea. No. Martial law simply means a suspension of normal law, basically rule by dictator or military. Go read the Webster Dictionary version. There's several, but that's basically it. When the Senate votes to give the president unlimited power for military action anywhere in the world, anytime he wants in perpetuity, that's an unprecedented, unconstitutional declaration of war. It gets worse. Even Defense One says, this is incredible, this is unprecedented, this is raising eyebrows, he's trying to sneak it through when Snowmageddon has hit and they're saying shelter in place and are looking at five to 10 feet of snow in DC. So almost no one's there, they said the Congress had shut down, and then he's going in, just like the Federal Reserve Act passed in 1913, on what, Christmas Eve, in the middle of a blizzard. Well, here we are in the middle of a record blizzard, the 22nd, 2016, in January, and they're doing this. Buckley, I'm going to go to document cam. Um, 
for folks that are uh, watching right now, I guess we can go over to that television there and show folks, but we're going to go over this for the folks on Facebook mentions and the prisonplanet.tv nightly news viewers. But here it is, Defense One. Mind you, this is not Alex Jones saying all this, okay? And this is just all part of the economic collapse, uh, Europe declaring civil emergencies, economic emergencies, uh, suspension of rights, suspensions of, of, of being able to protest, any of this. So, so let's go over it. Senate leader surprises lawmakers with new ISIS war powers request. War powers. Now, normally they did a declaration of war. It was a huge deal. Then they just call it war powers. Oh, if you know... Uh, terrorists attack the Capitol, the military is allowed to respond. No, no, this is worldwide, 360, anytime they want. And then they'll spin it and go, you don't trust our military. No, our military is saying, get controls over Obama and the globalists. And here's this rhino neocon, Mitch McConnell of Kentucky, giving the president unprecedented power. And listen, it may get worse, okay, down the road. And, and, and they'll give them even more powers. The point is, is that this is martial law on the books if this passes, and they're trying to ram it through very, very sneakily. So continuing, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell offered members a snow weekend surprise, quietly teeing up a debate on the legal underpinning for the fight against ISIS. After months of worrying that such a resolution, known as an authorization for the use of military force, would tie the next president's hands, McConnell's move to fast-track the measure surprised even his top deputy, Senate Majority Leader John Cornyn, another senator from Texas, who was unaware that McConnell had set up the authorization. He did, Cornyn asked National Journal. The AUMF put forward by McConnell would not restrict the president's use of ground troops nor have any limits. They can just invade Syria or whatever. Related to time or geography. So you can use ground troops wherever you want, any country you want, no related time, in perpetuity. Forget geography. I mean, this is a global 360 declaration of U.S. military martial law, but the U.S. doesn't run the U.S. It's even worse. We're run by globalists. Come on over here, Buckley. We'll get into the document here. So look at this for yourself. Obama administration, the use of ground troops, nor have any limits related to time or geography, nor would it touch on the same issue of what to do with the 2001 AUMF, which the Obama administration has used to attack ISIS despite this authorization instructions to use force against those who plan the 9-11 terrorist attacks. By contrast, the legal authority put forward by the administration last February wouldn't authorize enduring offensives, uh, ground troops operations, and what have ended three years ago and then it goes on. So see, that was the whole debate. Don't give them unlimited ground troop power or they'll do a Syrian war backing ISIS and Al-Qaeda. But forget that. This is anywhere in the world. So they can attack Russia. They can launch attacks in Ukraine uh, where we got U.S. troops fighting Russians now, it's admitted. They can start a war with China. They can do anything. They can use them here in America. And of course, when they use them, it'll be meant to look legitimate. So the police and the military all work together. And so it looks legitimate. It's all part of a process of conditioning us to accept it. And then we point out we've got NSA spying. They deny it's happening. Then they say, oh, it's only on terrorists. Then it turns out they're using the NSA to spy on the FBI. So they can't stop San Bernardino terrorists. And then we learn they're working with the terrorists because it's a foreign multinational group, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let's go to a couple more articles right here. This is what else has been happening. Michael Schneider, who was on today from Economic Collapse blog. Emergency powers gives Barack Obama authority over just about everything during a major national crisis, including economic. Obama is now the most powerful president in history. And the precedent set to this to be passed to the next president. It's about the power structure abolishing the Bill of Rights and Constitution by fiat, by executive action. Let's continue. Obama signs executive order to allow detention of all Americans with respiratory illnesses or any signs of it separately there. They've built civilian inmate labor camp programs and admit that they will, quote, re-educate extremists at them. Remember this last week, January 8th, or two weeks ago, CNN op-ed calls for Obama to declare national state of emergency to gut Second Amendment to scare us into submission with the announcement of confiscation. That'll start a civil war. I don't know exactly everything they're up to. I don't know when what shoes are going to drop or what balloons are going to go up. But I know this. The whole world is going into tyranny. Global government's being announced, run by above the law, 
mega corporations that control our governments and play populations off against each other. And the fact that this bill was introduced and that it's gotten no attention, it was introduced secretly basically two days ago, Cornyn said he hadn't heard of it yesterday, and now it's just been in a few newspapers today, and, and, and again, this should be one of the top stories in the country right now, in the world, that the United States that has half the military power in the world, half the defense budget, probably more than half the military power in the world, is about to sign over to a Barack Obama unlimited power to attack whoever he wants, whenever he wants, when you read the authorization. And this is a guy already caught funding ISIS. This is a guy already caught funding al-Nazr and al-Qaeda. This is crazy. But this is what happens in every other country and every other culture over and over again, historically. This is martial law 2016. It is the theme of where we're going. They will never call it martial law. They will call it civil emergency. They think the public's too dumb on NFL playoffs to even see what's happening. When we complain, they just say, oh, none of this is even going on, knowing the public's ignorant. But the good news is more and more people are listening. More and more people are involved. More and more people are aware of what's happening. And most importantly, I talk to our military. I have a lot of them on the air, even active duty. And they're aware of what's going on and tell me that they're not going to go along with this tyranny. Folks, we need to come together as a nation, not let George Soros and the White House start a race war. We need to come together and promote liberty and freedom. We need to uh, defend ourselves. We need to get prepared. We need to be politically active. We need to be on the defense and the offense. Now, I'm going to go ahead and throw it into the main transmission, the intro for InfoWars Nightly News and all the info coming up. And I know Jakari Jackson will have more to say on this uh, as it unfolds, but no one can deny that massive, sustained preparations for political oppression and attacks on the press and the IRS assaults on gun owners and Christian groups and, and, and real classical persecution and oppression is already happening at unprecedented scales and is being geared up for even more. And here's something I've been told by the establishment and, and by media people. They go, Alex, you're left on air because you scare people. And we can't come right out and admit we're doing all this. And so you're just, we let you do what you do because you scare them. Well, you know what? I think they've miscalculated. I think you want to face a crisis. I think you want to face these evil people. I think you want to not turn tail and run from it and roll over to these wolves. I know historically that when people are really faced with the truth, a lot of them stand up and that's when tyranny is defeated. Denying this, being cowards is only going to destroy us. It's happening regardless. They're coming after everybody's pension funds. They're coming after us to break us financially. And I don't believe you're cowards. I believe you deserve to hear the truth and deserve to know what's really happening to you and your family right now is the greatest country in the history of the world is swallowed by classical, bona fide, stinking tyranny. And the rest of the world is following suit as well. The planet is in grave danger. Huge wars are starting. The economy is plunging. It's all to bring in the world government, ladies and gentlemen. All right, I'm going to throw it to Jakari Jackson, the official kickoff of InfoWars Nightly News. Please get this transmission out to everyone you know, and please stay with us and get this information out to everybody in the articles at InfoWars.com that break this down and link to all the evidence. I'm Alex Jones signing off until the official kickoff of InfoWars Nightly News. And that was Alex Jones with a breaking news report. Now, David Knight, that was a lot of information to ingest. So can you break it down for us? Well, Jakari, when I look at this, I, I see surrenders and surprises. Because we've had Congress surrender its authority to multinational corporations to write trade treaties. We've had them surrender their ability to write laws to the bureaucracies. Last year, we had over 81,000 pages of rules and regulations coming from the bureaucracy. So we now have not only... Uh, taxation without representation, but legislation without representation. And of course, this is part of them surrendering their authority to declare war. So Congress has completely surrendered, but there's also a surprise element in this. And that is the fact that this came out just as the snow uh, weekend is happening, massive uh, snow Snowmageddon. Exactly. And, and when you look at this, the thing that concerns me about the authorization of the use of military force goes in conjunction with the uh, NDAA.